Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Move Podcast, brought to you each and every time by Aura. Aura packs so much in it. For and by the way, and I don't, I don't know if this crosses people's minds, but totally non-invasive. Like it is just a ring. Advanced heart rate, heart rate variability, core temperature, activity, sleep monitoring, all in this little package. It is the most advanced sort of tracker on the market. The finger, by the way. Uh, the most accurate place to measure all these key metrics. I'm, I'm psyched. I almost said I'm stoked, but I should have said that because that's what surfers say. They just announced this partnership with USA Surfing to join the NBA, the WNBA, UFC, and a bunch of other folks. All you do is, uh, and if you don't know your ring size, this is how this works if people are curious. Uh, they'll send you a sizing kit. You figure out your ring size, and uh, boom. Boom. The Aura Ring shows, shows up. Head on over to Aura Ring, O-U-R-A Ring dot com. We are talking about stage five. That's QLN to tell us the correct pronunciation. Stage five, changer to Laval Espace Mayenne. Oh my wow. God. I, I might, the, the last one, changer I got, but the last one? Need it again? I need it again. Stage five, changer to Laval Espace Mayenne. Laval Espace Mayenne. And as you pointed out yesterday, there was no changer in the yellow jersey, which uh, is a big shocker for all of us. That's a big shocker. And I, I, we got to talk about it because it's, um, yeah, it, 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 there's a lot to it. And it's just, it, the, the one thing that stays consistent is, is Matthew Vanderpool will just do whatever he wants. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, before we jump into the action, uh, today's show also brought to you by Athletic Brewing. I love this uh, beer. For anybody out there that's sober curious, uh, full disclosure, last night was George's birthday party, so uh, this didn't apply to him. But uh, <laughs> Bill and John, the two founders, they, they loved beer, and they realized that there were uh, either folks that didn't, didn't want to drink alcohol or there were a lot of folks that just wanted to cut back and be sober curious. Uh, so, and they looked around and, and all the, you know, sort of non-alcoholic beers out there were crap. So they made a true, uh, craft beer that's non-alcoholic. They just expanded their brewery and tap room on the East coast. They just got opened a new brewery on the West coast. The other good thing, especially for guys like me, since I got so beat down on the bike ride yesterday, only 50 to 70 calories per can. I need all the help I can get. Um, the, the, uh, the other thing I love about these guys, uh, they donate 2% of their sales to maintaining trails and parks through the, uh, a program called Two for the Trails. Uh, the last thing, uh, you can get this beer in the mail. So head on over to athleticbrewing.com. Free shipping for orders of two or more six packs. The discount code, the move 25 You get 25% off your first purchase. Today's show also brought to you by Amp, Human, and Momentus. We announced it yesterday. The two companies have merged. Two great brands that we love. The PR Lotion, absolutely working. Um, I may need a little more for the ride today. And they've merged with Momentus, another great brand that we've just been fans of forever. We didn't even... Uh, in fact, this merger deserves the boomstick. I mean, this is a match made in heaven. So not only do you have... All the great products from AMP, and now you have all the great products of Momentus, all in one company. I'm particularly very excited about that merger. I'm a huge fan of both products, and I know we spoke with both founders yesterday, and they're yep. they're going to be a great. It's going to be a great partnership. I'm looking forward to it. Just bring them over here where you can see them. Um, head on over to AMP Human. This is exciting, and, and congrats to to uh, both teams. Um, I, I, I think one and one equals. A lot more than two. So uh, head on over to amphuman.com slash momentous and use the code TDF20 at checkout for 20% off all momentous and amphuman products. Congratulations to both teams. All right, well, let's talk. I mean, you know, Matthew Vanderpool, he did a nice job sort of convincing everybody that he's had a nice run and you time know, to give up it's yellow. Time, you know, I got no chance. <laughs> By the way, what a great training day for uh, uh, um, the Olympics mountain bike race. <laughs> I mean, the fact that he's not even doing the road race at the Olympics. 
which I overheard you, uh, I think, talking to Johan this morning, just blown mm-hmm. away. You didn't know that, uh, that he was not doing the Olympic road race. And right. You didn't know it either because I, I asked you. Yeah. That's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but like we were saying, I mean, that's just it's pretty shocking that he's not on that road race team. Right. But but and then, you know, you start to hear these things. Uh, never been in a wind tunnel. Was up until midnight trying to get his time trial bike dialed. I think about all I mean, the guys in the, in the <laughs> top 20 of the Tour de France. Right? They are basically in unison with their time trial bike. They ride it three or four days a week in training. They probably have time trial bikes at home. Like everything is completely 1,000% dialed in in their time trial position. And for him to say on TV, he's like, yeah, we were up till midnight tinkering with my position, trying to get as fast as an arrow as possible. <laughs> midnight. The night, night before, before the stage. And then apparently they were trying to figure out some wheels for the time trial. <laughs> this just gets better. Somebody had to drive wheels from Portugal or something and got the 10 hour drive. Like they didn't have that dialed. Who forgot in, that? Andorra actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, the wheel, every, everything. He Portu- basically, he What's ba- Portugal Andorra? What's he this? basically takes the playbook and just throws it out the window and says, I'm going to do my own thing. I don't think somebody forgot him. I think they just thought, you know, either at this point it wouldn't matter or I don't know. I mean, What's by the way, the, ra- the truck is huge that carries all the bikes and all the gear. Like, wheel? how about we just throw in a couple sets of wheels for him <laughs> right. he changed his wheels as a uh, cockpit uh, skin suit uh, did, they did it everything last minute and uh finished you know, you know did an amazing amazing time trial. and you mentioned that he hasn't been in a wind tunnel how much did that change your position when you spent time in a wind tunnel pretty significant i'm guessing yeah yeah it's it's you can change it a lot that's the problem with the wind tunnel is you can get really arrow and at least when we were maybe it's different now the way they test but when we would be in the wind tunnel you weren't really pedaling. You weren't, there was, I mean, the best scenario, and George, you probably know, is that you sit in the wind tunnel and sort of simulate race effort. Like, you can get in the wind tunnel and pedal 100 watts and be super aero, and you get out on the road, and you can't, you just can't pedal. Yeah. It's just, the position's too, uh, it's too compact. So, um, I'm assuming now they're probably in there doing some power testing. and You have to simulate, simulate yeah. the power you would have in a TT. And it, I don't know, I mean, I... I I always wanted to be higher. And then back in the day, they were always like, you got to get lower, got to get lower. And I, that just doesn't, that didn't never, that never worked for me. These guys seem pretty high. They seem pretty high. Yeah. They seem I'd be to, down with that. The fastest guys are, seem to be higher and higher. I mean, Wiggins started that uh, back in the day, 2012, uh, was probably one of the first guys that went kind of super high up, but he was flat. And, you know, apparently that was a much more aero position. You mean there's a lot more guys doing it now. Their head position or bringing their elbows up, like bringing all the above, everything. everything. All the above. Okay. Yeah. Well, and maybe, yeah, they do, do, do as you saw um, Pogachar doing a lot today, dropping the head. I mean, the head, that head sitting up is, it's just, it's just in the way. But uh, speaking of Pogachar, I mean, I don't know who I'm more impressed with today. I actually, I'm more impressed with Pogachar's performance. Yeah, I mean, we we all knew that he was good. I mean, he's been there every day since the start of the tour. But we were questioning his time trial capabilities from his results there at the time trial nationals a few weeks ago. Right. I feel kind of stupid even talking about the Slovenian time trial. Oh, I know. I mean, <laughs> he, got, he went out. He like, who hurt. gives a shit? We saw what we saw today. We're like, and uh, who cares? Like, he got – or whatever place he got. Like, that's – well, I, think, I think what uh, surprised a lot of us is we saw him at stage 20 last year, but it was up a lot of climbing. Mm-hmm. We didn't know he could outdo – Stefan Kuhn, you know, on a flat time trial. Wow, Wow, Van Art. Yep. Yeah, I mean, watching today, I actually texted the team and I said, finito tour. I'm thinking as of, but I'm going to, I'm going to go back on that statement because we had a lot of time here. We We had a lot of time. We got shows to do. Five days in. And for a second there, I was thinking, you know, this could be, you know, not as an exciting tour as we thought because of his uh, dominating performance today. But in revisiting that thought, I think it's actually going to make it more exciting because now the teams, we got Primos, almost two minutes behind. We got Carapats, almost two minutes behind. The only option is to race and use all of their strengths as a team to try to get time on a, on a poetry right And now. We, we say this every year. This is why you, in the, these years where they don't have an early time trial, because they say it makes the race boring uh, or predictable, that's bullshit. Like this is, the, the, now these guys have to go on the attack. And this is, has been our point for years. Like. That's going to animate. That's not going to make the race boring. It's going to animate the race. Um, it's, it's, I just realized I said a, a bad word, and we've gotten a lot of uh, – sorry to interrupt this important story about the overall, but a lot of listeners and viewers have wondered where the swear jar is. 
and uh, unfortunately, there's no money in it. And I've said a few bad words, but the but but the swear jar is here. So we we'll start. I'll make up for the bad words we've said. Um, what I would like to report is that if you guys watched the NBC coverage yesterday, the the little filter they usually have or the delay didn't work, and Kevin just dropped a nice f bomb in his interview. So I, has he he Venmoed you twenty dollars for the charity? <laughs> I believe he did, right? Not yet. <laughs> well, then, then then request it, and I'll then we'll 20. we'll I'll, we'll put it in here for Cav for his f bomb yesterday. Swear swear jars here, but anyways, I mean it just uh, I think it makes it exciting. I, I think this is the, the a guy like Carpaz who's so explosive in the mountains. He has to go. There's no doubt it's going to make it more exciting. Yeah. And there the other dynamics to this is that UAE has had a not a great start to the tour. I mean Hershey's out. One of their top guys, Brandon McNulty, uh, also one of their if not their best climber, is had a bad crash today. So we hope that he recovers. Hate to see that. But two guys, two of their main guys uh, that um, Pogacar is really going to need in the mountains are you know questionable. Well, one is out. Hmm. Hmm. I see what you mean because uh, typically we just see them within 10, 15 seconds of each other and just marking each other right. on the climb. Yeah. Right? They just – Pogachar would just mark them. Yep, and jump on their wheel. Yep. every time. Now they got to go. Big. Well, he's gonna. He can do that. He can. I he know. Get, they're gonna have to get creative. Speaking of Pogachar, the thing. I mean, his performance in the time trial was incredible. But before it even started, when he rolls up to the line, he feels like his something's wrong with his bike. His brakes are rubbing something, and he's got like three or four minutes to get to the start line. And, and they're working on it. And they're working on the bike. And I'm watching. I'm like, this is the biggest story in the race right now. Like, they're showing some guy riding for 82nd place. I don't need to see that. But they flash back, and he's just standing there calm and cool. I'm like, if that were me, I'd be freaking the fuck out. Like, guys, like, he was just like, they'll get it done. They'll get it done. <laughs> just, we got, we got time, guys. Don't worry. Yeah. Even if I start late, we'll be all right. <laughs> you, you, like, you definitely would have been the opposite of that. It's just it, crazy. He rolls up to the start line, and his brakes are rubbing. That's, uh, yeah, kind of uh, a crazy thing I to I would see. be freaking out I mean, the I, other thing i love to see it when he crossed the finish line what was the first thing that he drank we talk about all this how the teams are all dialed in nutritionally everything's planned to the t homie whips out a fanta which was my go-to drink after any warm stage did was he the really fanta. a lot of us a lot of the pros they wanted that sweet cold carbonation i hmm. hope it was cold a lot of the euros don't like the cold drinks but had the fanta i texted some you know when it, one of my insiders and, and it was like, getting, is there like a, we getting all, paid to drink Fanta? We're all wearing these CGMs now. We know exactly what the what happens when we drink these uh, soft drinks. Gets a huge spikes, and I'm like, is is he doing this for a spike or any kind of reason? He's like, he's a kid. He just wants the Fanta. Like <laughs> that's what he's thinking. I want the Fanta. I love it. I respect it. I remember and Pavel I'm Pajanov, being paid by Fanta. Pavel Pajanov in one of the stages came across all jacked up, lost skin everywhere, and our Swan yours, I think Richie was was trying to attend to him to start cleaning. He goes. Give me, just give me two minutes. I want to enjoy my Fanta. <laughs> Loved it. I mean, it's one of those moments. You just kind of have that Fanta after a hard day, whether you're wrecked, tired, it just feels good. Mm. Some other notable performances on, on the downside. Uh, we just, we mentioned Carpaz, but not a good day for him. Um, and not a great day for Garen Thomas. I think it was... Um, all things considered, for Garen Thomas, not a bad day. I mean, look at what he went through two days two days ago. Right. Um, well, so did Primoz Roglic. Roglic, I'm actually very, uh, very impressed I, I, with his I performance. I think he should be happy with his performance. Yeah, and I think it sets up for some super exciting racing. He's a minute and a half down, minute 45 down, roughly. And it's just, like we said, he's got no choice but to attack. He's, You'd think he's only going to get better from here on out. Yep. I mean, today is probably his worst day. So I'm, I'm not counting him out yet at all. Uh-uh. No, I don't know. I think it's still wide open. It's it's the tour. There's a, people have bad, everybody, or most people have a bad day. Don't forget, Pogachar is young. Uh, there's just a lot can happen. His team is, as you mentioned, George is in question. Um, well, apparently Hershey is not out. That was my mistake again. I'm a little bit off. Man, uh, uh, you got you must have, you, this birthday really kicked your ass last night. You <laughs> can't did. even. But he did have some bad crashes, so. I'm but gonna, you, we, you know, you last night around. you did commit uh, to to something um, that you'll we'll, you you guys and gals will see in a future show. You, he committed to this, and it now he's trying to commitment. He's trying to backslide on us. Yes. Um, but we are going to hold him to that commitment. That's all you're going to say on that one. That's all I'm going to say. And look at there. Look at last night with the whole move, the team from the move. Look at that. 
Yeah, it was a great night. Shirley whipped up some amazing food. Good time there. Well, we're talking about the crew, uh, you know, and, and this is the year of crashes just through stage five. Our own Ashish took a little tumble. I know, and and uh, it's, it's, it was a you you felt the tension last night. I mean, he's really pissed at you. Yeah, I know. George. And that actually, made, it, it made me think about him because I'm watching, you know, Garrett Thomas, you know, with a separated shoulder. Primos he's got basically no skin on both elbows. Elbows. And our boy back there in the room, he's like, he's taking three days off. He doesn't want to ride anymore because he's got a little scratch on his elbow. <laughs> Jeez, what you got going on over there? And and he basically hates you. <laughs> he, he, I mean, he wouldn't even talk to you. Last time. I know he wouldn't. Did you see what George did to make good on the accident, unsolicited? I cleaned his bike <laughs> Washed on his my bike. birthday. <laughs> but I, I, I'll tell the story. We, it, we ran into our boy. For starters, you've never cleaned a bike your whole life. Yeah, so. Probably didn't do a great job. We ran into our boy Todd DeBuff on the trails, single track trails, and we're sitting there on this blind corner chatting with him. <laughs> she comes rolling in about 45 seconds later, full gas. You know, head down, staring at the stem, and saw us, full panic, slide out, crash on these bad rocks. I felt bad about it, but I'm not sure it was entirely my fault because I'm always preaching about being Mosca. You got to be Mosca at all times, guys. <laughs> all right? Blind corners, everything. Always be Mosca. Be safe. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> what does this mean for uh, Walt Van Art sitting 30 seconds off of gc nothing it's nothing because when they get in the mountains it's it's not a factor well i mean i, I don't know i guess last year we, we've talked about how he um i mean there's days in the tour where he's 10 guys left he's still there he's still there he seems to be a little bit That's, off of his game right now we were expecting i picked him for the win a lot of people picked him he, i think he was the odds on favorite mm. correct me if i'm wrong and uh even he was on on DraftKings, he was the favorite. Yeah, and, and, and actually, Kung was uh, the second favorite. Matthew mm -hmm. Vanderpool actually picked him for the win as well. He, was, he thought he would be the most dangerous guy. So clearly he's probably disappointed. Uh, but like you said, <clears throat> the race has got a long way to go. Tomorrow is going to be a sprint stage. The day after tomorrow, which was my pick, if you watched our preview show, was going to be the first day a breakaway was actually going to get <coughs> away. Uh, I'm actually really interested uh, to hear, you know, Johan's thoughts on the tactics on stage seven because there's going to be a lot going on there it's going to be the real first test a couple of hard mountains at the, not crazy hard mountains at the end but very difficult stage to control who's going to control it who's going to be aggressive i mean there's going to be a lot of stuff happening on stage you know seven. what's crazy about and i'm just looking at the stage results uh between uh, with wout van art and and matthew vanderpool like they match each other in everything like in cyclocross they're head to head in the classics head to head and it's it's, it's like they're the same guy they were a second apart today like, it's just, it's nuts. Yeah, I nuts. mean, they, they are just so equal. And then, yeah, Johan and I touched, talked about how they push each other. You've described how you woke up thinking about Jan Ulrich, mm -hmm. and he pushed you. Those two guys have been pushing each other since they were Ten, juniors. 12, yeah. whatever. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Well, it is going to be exciting. Uh, we'll jump into, I think that we have some fun stuff for the second half of the show, and then we'll start talking about tomorrow, which... You know, we're going to have to spend a lot of time talking about George's boy, um, which it's, 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 he's my boy now. I'm, i and he's called you late last, call, uh, call uh, me late, late last his night, night th last night. And, and even I got a shout out. Got he a said shout to out. tell Lance hello. That's, he did say um, that. that was sweet. So, uh, today's show also brought to you by Roca. And for this segment, I just feel like, cause I've got a lot going on. I'm getting a lot of shit about the hair today. Um, I I think it looks dope. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of comments about it. And I think well. if I put on, I mean, come on, George, dude. All right, we got to do something. Is, we we need our main squeeze working on that hair. We'll, we'll, okay, I'll show. tighten up the hair. But but today's show brought to you by Roca, uh, amazing sunglasses like this. I'm now I'm rocking the titanium aviator. This is uh, we normally talk about the cycling stuff, the prescription glasses. Hello, the titanium. I mean. <laughs> I would buy these. Look, looking at me right now, I would buy these. Yeah. Do you agree, JB? They're, look, they're pimp. Um, they're nice. but, they, but in all seriousness, they make amazing shades. Founded by great athletes, four great athletes, based down in our old hometown of Austin, Texas. Um, everything about it's great. Lightweight, the design, the lens. Uh, it is our go-to. Uh, head on over to, there's the flow code. Head on over to Roca. That's R-O-K-A. Dot com and enter the move at checkout for 20% off. Last one of the day, and this is cool. We actually have <clears throat> the sample pack that we talk about all the time. This is from LMNT, 
L M N T, four letters. Um, you know, and this yesterday was a great example, dude. I was sweating so bad on this ride. Like we go out riding with George and all these guys. This is before George crashed a sheesh, but um, they <laughs> absolutely kicked my ass. I was pouring in sweat. I was like, "What is wrong with you, man?" Um, I was a little worried about you. Yeah, I, it was it was not good. Uh, but I was hammering. The LMNT, this is my go-to. 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium. New flavor alert. Watermelon salt and grapefruit salt. Uh, no sugar, no gluten, no artificial ingredients. This is the real deal. Uh, there's our flow code. Head on over to drinklmnt.com slash the move, and you'll get this fancy uh, recharge kit. I'm recharging right now. It's my and George is recharging because he was he, he, he uses was, it in his cocktails and now he's using it as his all recovery. Day. All he day. Was, um, he cocktails. was and he forgot like half the things he purposes. said. I'm worried he, we may have to have an intervention. You forgot like <laughs> half the shit you said last night. You're like first of all you commit you forgot that you committed to do this really bold thing. Yeah, and then you were like, wait, what time were we up? And we were all last night. We were all like, it's midnight. We need to go to bed. Like you were talking about that. Yeah, that was late. That was too yeah. late. Um, <clears throat> oh, you know what I saw on social media? They they have located the the chick standing in the road. Arrested her. And they arrested her. Yeah. Look at this. And okay, fifteen thousand euro fine and facing a year in prison. Now I know everybody. I mean, the, I was and I was livid about this. Ah. I don't know about a year in prison. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just since, since, like, what is the offense? I mean, is there maybe in maybe in France, being a dumbass, we'll have to get you a year in prison. The prisons would be full. You know, who we'd have to ask. <laughs> we'd have to ask Tony Martin, who is an ex police officer, who was the first really? person that was taken out by her. So he would have the best opinion on what the actual penalties. Let me ask you. Her. know, I've been thinking about this because yep. I, you and I disagreed. I thought he, I do think he could have moved over a little bit, and I, and I continue to think about this. Here's a question for you. Why wouldn't he hit the brakes? He didn't even begin. To, it, you're going at a human being. I'm not just, I'm just saying, I'm, I want to just hash this out. Like maybe just tap the brakes. He didn't have time. I don't think uh, she just, she popped out. He, he got a lot going on. If he had a chance to hit the brakes, he would have. I don't think he had time. To. I mean, how many times have you been more so on a climb, but people are not out of the way well, that, until yeah, the last that's second? Exactly right. You, you're expect if you even if you see that, you're expecting them to move out of the way. Go back to the picture. Watch this. She's not looking at him. Like if, if you, I get it that you wouldn't hit the brakes if they were looking at you and and you're thinking, okay, they're going to move out of the way. She's looking the other way. Like if I. And All right, you know what? I'm not going to win this one. Who goes to a bike race? By the way, she's the also way? German, like I told oh, you. She's no. not French. She's German. Ooh. Is she really yeah. German? Thank you, Johan. Wow. So did they arrest her in Germany? With that, we don't know, actually. Hmm. That's what I was thinking. She probably just hightailed it out of France right away <laughs> and went straight to Germany. Who knows? But they found her. Yeah, I don't know about a year in prison. I don't know. Also got some love from Alan Piper. That yep. was and we we uh, hearts go out to him. He's he's been dealing with some health issues. Guy's a fucking legend, um, uh, and and uh, still very very involved from what we hear with with, with UAE and and uh, creating strategy, drafting, you know, really dictating strategy for uh, Pogachar. But uh, he gave us a little love in this Velo News interview. Well, he's he's still directing from home uh, right. because of his health issues, but not in the team car. Yeah, yeah, like last year. Which yeah, he he's got all the map mapping pulled up, and he speaks to the directors on a daily basis. And he is—I I worked with him very closely on HTC. One of the smartest guys in cycling, and uh, just one of the best guys in cycling as well. Since uh, can well, I'll read it here because a lot of people don't see the the uh, the video. Some just listen to the podcast, but uh, he did give a shout out to us, which was pretty cool. He said, one thing I did last year was I'd listen to the podcast from Lance and George Hincapi. Uh Oh, you both have the same last name, Lance and George Hincapi. Uh, I <laughs> well, only one guy needs, <laughs> it just needs one name. It's like Pele <laughs> and like uh, Ronaldo. No, it said, he said, I did that every day to the start. It gave me a lot of different perspectives because, because it's also important to get impressions from people that are not biased. Hearing George and Lance speak from two guys that were both really good bike riders and both understand racing well, well, that gave me an idea 
of what other teams might be doing or thinking. The stages are coming up and uh, how that might influence the day. It allowed me to say, look, this is what I think will happen, but this could also happen and you have to be prepared amen to that <clears throat> we're thinking about you alan Hope, hopefully you're listening today but uh all the best dude's a legend he's going to be uh heavily relied on with these next uh well the, the rest of the tour yeah. of france i mean tactically this is going to be setting up to be a very very exciting uh last part of the last two weeks of the tour de france cool and i think our uh our friend joe natali's getting active again he is really the gra- our graphics oh, guru boy. what now what's <laughs> going HRH oh, this is just <laughs> that that one is. I awesome. mean, <laughs> he put your autograph. On is that yeah? <laughs> uh, like for real? Like what? What is the bo- what is the whole other thing? Like is that a, a British something king or something? I mean, or is that like a an Arabian king? I don't know. What is that from? Anyways, Joe. Well, well Joe, we learned uh, it's endless with this guy. We learned from Anna that that's a nickname for Lance around the house. HRH. It used to it, be. His I've, royal highness. I, no, I've, I've cleaned up my act. <laughs> I heard he... Uh, uh, wait, can we just go back to that for a second? Because I just noticed something. On the HRH... Oh, check out the forward logos on either side. It's of, details, that, I know. It, you just... This shit like that, you, you kind of miss. And then, boom, it appears. The pinky ring. Look at wait, that dope pinky ring I got. We on. need an HRHT <laughs> with the arrows. Yeah. yeah. I like that. <laughs> Let's talk about tomorrow. Uh oh. Wait, no. We're, <laughs> what, is, Wait. what is going on what? here? <laughs> what is this? Joe Natali as well? The tats on George. Oh my! Pull up crusher. <laughs> I am kind of looking shredded in that. That is, not, bro. That ain't you. I mean, that's your head. But that, that, might that be a little it, bit of a, yeah. That is my front door at my house. So. <laughs> and while we're showing all the fun stuff, um, friend of the show sent a video of his son. I think his name's Waylon. Uh, and uh, speaking of pull ups, he, he made a video for George cranking okay, out some pull ups. Two, <laughs> three, this kid not even trying yet. Four, okay, more than me. Five, keep going. <laughs> yep. Six, we get it. All right, kid, you're a badass. Seven, all right, he's not even trying yet. He's looking, uh huh. All right. Wow. <laughs> George, you, you got... That's another one of those uh, things I loosely committed to that I'm not uh, actually sure I'm going to... By the way, by the way that, I got to give a shout. That kid, now he's going to the one-arm pull-up. He's the son of uh, Andrew, Willis, Andrew our, Willis, our promoter, race promoter in Central Texas. Awesome dude. And runs the Crit Series. Awesome dude, yep. And we are, and we talked about it yesterday, we're going to have the Members Only Happy Hour tomorrow night, which will be kicked off with a pull-up contest. <laughs> this is just, it's hard to even say these things out loud, but it's true. People yeah, I are, told you uh, when uh, she just came around the corner yesterday, he kind of slammed into my shoulder. So I got to see if I recover. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Stop thing. backtracking on stuff, man. You're in. Uh, members only. And that's, yeah, that's uh, head on over to. Uh, and actually, check it out now. Whoa. Flow code. Just scan the flow code. That'll, uh, that'll show you how to have immediate access to that members only content that we crank out. What's fun with uh, the happy hours is a lot of people ask non-cycling related questions yeah. about you guys. It's and by, yes, fun. and by the way, send those questions in because we'll try to get to as many of them as possible. Are we, able, are we able to talk about the new feature we might be doing for members, or is that another show? That, that, that's a not, that's I'm still All I'm right, we'll still percolating it. on that All idea. Right, it, it's in and around. It, I will just tease it out. It's in and around. It's, I've just kind of been fascinated with the way uh, sports betting has become the norm and, and almost accepted. And it's not legal in every state, but like between these uh, platforms like DraftKings and FanDuel. And you can, like, you can legit, obviously, I think about betting, I think about the NFL, college football, whatever, Super Bowl. But like in, in cycling, you can go in and make all these bets on the tour. It's crazy. So I just, it just. Uh, I think that's going to make this show even more popular. Yeah, well. We'll, 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 we'll just keep, keep thinking on it. Hey, we got to talk about uh, tomorrow's stage, stage six. I think the coolest thing about this, because I, I, I want to stay out of this game of trying to pick winners and losers because I'm not good at it, and I'm not going to pick Mark Cavendish, and George is going to get mad at me. And George will pick Cavendish. <laughs> he will absolutely pick him. Everybody's picking him. But I do think uh, it, if you want to pull at the heartstrings, you know, he's chasing this record from Eddie Merckx. Tomorrow's stage finish, whatever the name of this town is, uh, is the first town that that, that was the the the, f- the town of his very first stage win in the Tour de France. Yep. Like was, what I a random. 
I was there with him, so it'll be fun to see him do it again. You're going. I guess we'll just jump right into that. You're going with <laughs> well, that. I'm going to go with Cat. Well, not only that. I mean, the the team is now. They have full belief in him. Uh, That's for and sure. They've seen what he can do, and Ali Philippe is is showed that he helped him on the the day with the green jersey. Now he's not even in the jersey, so he's going to have everything going for him. Of course, any, it's a Tour de France. Anything can happen. Everybody's going to, you know, you got your Demars and your um, all the other spinners hey, that don't are don't rule right out the the Alpeson duo. Yeah, and those guys have been a. Uh, a tough duo to uh, beat. What about Peter Sagan? Uh, he doesn't seem to have the the, the kick right now. Um, hmm. But I'm, I'm going with Cap again for tomorrow. And I think uh, Albison will probably end up leading out Malir as opposed to Philipson. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. <laughs> um, so it'll be interesting to see. Looks pretty straightforward. And Vanderpool's not afraid to lead him out as well. True. God, you imagine that lead out from that guy? He just winds it up to you know fifteen hundred watts for a kilometer. You're yeah. just sitting back there going, "Hang on, I don't on. even know if I can come around this dude." <laughs> yeah, think about that. Of course, he's in. Uh, you never know yellow. if he might just gap and win. He's done it before. Yeah. And a safe finish. Um, looks like it's a straight run in one corner with uh, like a k and a half to go, and then straight to the finish line. Um, so hopefully, everybody stays upright. And in one of our emails, and I'll go to this one first, because it's an interesting theory on the crashes in these small towns, narrow roads, small towns. Uh, Stephen Wagner writes to us. He says, is one of the reasons, uh, is one reason the tour is having these inadequate finished courses is that the tour is outgrowing host cities. In the last year, I read that the tour is being rejected by the mayors of large French cities. They're getting uh, objected to shutting down their towns the crowds, and the trash that the tour brings with it. Whoa. So our future tours left with smaller tier towns, narrower roads, and complicated run-ins. Uh, Good theory. Oh, and, hey, and Stevens uh, out of Greenville. <clears throat> I mean, I'd, I had never heard that before, but it's yeah, if, if, if you have sort of medium-sized to large-sized cities that, that are saying, and probably a lot has to do with just the just – the inconvenience, I mean, the tour coming in that shuts down the city for a day. Yeah, if, if, you, if, if, if you're getting the Heisman from these larger towns, and you get, yeah, that, that, that would be a problem. And would actually, that's a, that's a damn good theory, if that yeah. is in fact true. I mean, it's a good theory, but it's also super expensive to host a, a finish of the Tour de France, or even start. I mean, the, the cities and towns have to pay for the, the so-called honor to have the Tour de France go through there, so. Even to pass through. Even to pass through, yep. All right, here's another email. Um, hi, JB Lance and George. Hello from Belgium. Big fan of your tour podcast, and I'm listening from the beginning uh, in the tra- from the beginning in the trailer, back in 17. I love the fact that you use the Flemish word panikuken, <laughs> but when you talk about one rider, you have to say panikuk. Oh, it's the singular of panikuken. <clears throat> one rider is is not a panik is not a panikuk. Two riders are not Panakukin. <laughs> I appreciate that. And then, by the way, I will never remember that, but I'll try. A Panakuk. Thank you, Stephen. And that's, this is another solution that I threw out yesterday is to get rid of these Panakukin teams. It's just less riders on these. If the roads are, in fact, going to get smaller, you've got to have less riders. Less Panakukin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what's beautiful about this the show? Kill, the killer of dreams. <laughs> I do, uh, Being a former team owner, I just you know you get into the Tour de France, the amount of money it takes to to you know have a budget that will require you to get into the Tour de France is mind-boggling. So these smaller teams, the fact that they're getting hey, give them the shot. Let's see, maybe they'll win a stage. I think uh, let mm. them live their dreams out. While you no, and that last email was from Stephen. But another um, while you, on the the subject of owning a team, you might have some good thoughts on this. Uh, it says, thank you for the great podcast you're doing. I'd like to ask about Alpeson Phoenix, this team, and why are, they are not still part of the World Tour. Uh, they certainly perform better than many World Tour teams, and they've already deserved their place. Why not? Uh, greetings from the Czech Republic, Peter. Good question. George, you know a lot more about this than I do. I mean, they're second division, but yeah, I mean, what, is that a... Right now, they don't have to be. They're getting the, it's the same exposure as a, a World Tour team and probably... You know, uh, a much lesser budget, so lower. Uh, and yeah, with much, with being second division, budget, yeah. the the minimum salaries are lower. Everything goes it, up. It, 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 the yeah. costs are go up exponentially from continental to pro continental to 
you know, they're a division to pro tour. So it's probably a yeah. question of money. The amount of tra travel, would they have a bigger roster to do cover two races at a time, things like that? Well, yeah, that's the other thing. The, these pro tour guys are sometimes at three different race races all over Europe. Um, so you need more staff, more riders. It's just a, it's a, a much bigger deal. Hmm. And for them, I mean, they're get they the obviously are being invited to all the big races. I mean, yeah, <laughs> like and they're getting cross. We're good. And, yeah, I mean, they're getting a lot of other styles of racing coverage. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's just see the move at we do dot team if you'd like to send a message. Yeah, send us and the the, the Belgian guy. i would curious because one year we were kicking ass in Finland. I still haven't figured out where Finland is, but. Um, <laughs> I wonder how we're doing in Belgium. Yeah, I need to. What was his name? Stefan? Uh, let's see. I just deleted that. Peter. Peter. Oh, wait. That's the one from Czech, the Czech no. Republic. That was uh, Stephen. 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 Was Stephen let us know how we're doing in Belgium. Hopefully, we're not panic cooking. <laughs> <laughs> so, who's your pick for tomorrow? I, t I said it before, when we started. I'm not picking because I'm, I, not, I, picking. I'm not good at it. You got to pick. Um. He'll pick, you know, he'll I, I, just say, I'm gonna, I'm he gonna, says Cipollini. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, Abdul, I'm going to pick uh, Abdul Japarov. No, I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pick the guy that won two days ago, Melier. Because I, I think, I, I think with that, look, just looking at the finish here, I think the lead out for, um, if, if, if MVP dials it up, it's perfect. Yeah. He's going to be going, he's going to be going 45 miles an hour. Yeah. And they're going to they're they're gonna be, gonna be all in behind Melier. Just swing it. Yeah. Including Cav. And I love Cav. And it's an amazing story. Maybe I should pick Cav. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the Cav, when Cav won yesterday, too, he had lost Ballerini. He was at 3K before the finish line, which is usually his last guy for the lead out. So just imagine Cav with a Ballerini tomorrow. Could be seeing the douches. Could be. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow talking about stage six. See if Mr. Cav can continue this pursuit of the, of the great Eddie Merckx.